Fallout 76 finds itself in a particularly interesting spot in the early half of 2021. In this video, what I want to do is look at one of the recent updates to the game, that being one of the biggest updates the game has received in months, but even further, take a look at some of the other stuff, some of the plan changes Bethesda just announced for the title, and how this is almost a direction they have yet to take with Fallout 76, and perhaps one of the most interesting parts, some of those recent data mines, which give us an even better look at that future. All of this coming together to hopefully answer for you if it's a good time to actually get invested or interested in Fallout 76 again, start playing again right now. And with all of these various topics, I do have some timestamps down below if you do want to skip around to one part or another. So just last week, Fallout 76 got its inventory update, which is one of the first big updates this game has received, of course, in 2021 itself, but also over the past few months. And it's actually probably one of the best updates this game has gotten overall, as what it brought to the table was a ton in the way of quality of life fixes. The stash limit was finally increased from that 800 pound limit to now being a nice 1200 pounds. The inventory screen itself got several new tabs added. Now there's a dedicated armor tab separate from the apparel or clothing tab with some of those cosmetic choices you have in 76. And even further, the A tab is now separate from the food and drink tab which makes sorting through that mess overall just way easier. And there's even something totally new and fresh with a new tab, highlighting some of the most recent items for you to have looted, and it actually is pretty handy, especially when you just pick up a new legendary, you wanna take a closer look at it, or even when you pick up something you don't mean to and you wanna quickly drop it. And what is probably the most useful out of all of these inventory changes is they actually now allow you to see the stack weight of a stack of items. So if you have a bunch of stim packs, you can see the individual weight of each stim pack but also the cumulative weight of all of the ones you have in your inventory. This makes actually getting your weight limit to be lower way easier. That coupled with the 1200 pound stash does make it so I'm sure many people are gonna have a bit less of a headache when actually trying to handle the weight limit overall. Fallout 76 already had literally the best inventory sorting system out of any Fallout game, and this just makes that lead even a bit larger. Player-owned vending machines got a better preview window, so now when you hover over one of these on the map, it'll show just which item items it holds, instead of showing all the categories just the relevant ones, in addition to showing you how many 3, 2, or 1 star items it has for armors and weapons. So you don't waste your time going to a vendor with a ton of weapons, but none of them are even legendary or they're only 1 star legendaries. They made it so in daily ops, if you actually complete it in the fastest time under 8 minutes, you will always get a rare item reward. This is huge. Previously, you had a percent chance at getting a reward, or you could just get nothing. Daily ops grind seems to be essential and critical to the future of these games. A lot of new items are distributed via that rare reward process, and this makes it so the grind that theoretically could have taken months to years in the past now can be done quite a bit quicker. If you're somebody spending a ton of money on the atomic shop, they made it so you could hide owned items, so the things you already purchased won't clutter up those store pages when you're trying to see what other options are out there, and they even added in a new vault shelter onto the Atomic Shop in general. This being a new microtransaction that's roughly $15, definitely way overpriced in my eyes, but if you are saving up the atoms or just don't mind spending the money, it is probably the best vault shelter out of the bunch, featuring nice big open areas, but also a bunch of little breakaway rooms, and even a fully built-in aquarium for you to look at. These vault shelters overall, which were added in a couple of updates ago, have really started to mature, and you can see some users taking full advantage of these camp extensions and creating some truly unique experiences in them, things that we've never seen with the more traditional camp system. I think this new one is, again, definitely the best, if not a bit pricey, and easily the most functional option out there right now. In addition to this, we saw a variety of bug and crash fixes, so hopefully the game crashes less, some exploits were addressed. The Forbidden Knowledge quest, which was previously broken around turning in technical data, has been re-enabled and now does work appropriately, and even Radworms now is actually not as annoying. And to top it all off, in the way of new content, Bethesda actually has a limited time Valentine's Day themed event going on. Not quite as hands-on as some of the other events, with a fully custom thing for you to do with the community. Rather, you get this free weapon skin for a rent in the game, take down enemies using the wrench doing specific challenges available each day, and you'll get specific rewards for those challenges, which is actually pretty cool. You can get some pretty interesting cosmetics via this, as well as just the experience overall, although not being as custom as events in past, still feels pretty special, and I feel like for those players sticking around, it has definitely made a nice impact. 
So overall, this is one of those updates that, although it doesn't really incentivize a ton of people to return to the game, is in my eyes one of the better updates this game has gotten just overall. It's not super glamorous at face value, not adding in a wealth of new content and a Wastelanders-esque expansion, but it's one of those updates that has so many little quality of life tweaks or improvements and even some bug fixes to go along with it that it'll gradually pay dividends over time. Later this year, as we eventually start to get into some of that new content, you're probably going to come back to the game and appreciate some of these changes once you get used to them. And it seems like that was really Bethesda's strategy for the first half of 2021 with Fallout 76, as they recently did announce several other plans for future additions to the game that were also not really huge in the way of new content, but are massive quality of life improvements and giving you quite a bit of additional functionality with the game. The first of which are these special loadouts. Basically, after you hit level 25 in Fallout 76, you can respec all of your special points into a different build. So basically, you can have two different slots, one with your current build, one with a totally different one, and this also applies to all of your perk cards. There's going to be this new thing called a punch card machine that you can build at your camp or find at train stations that allows you to do this, actually switch between them and also customize them. So seemingly, you can't customize your other loadout on the fly, you only have one active at a time and if you do want to switch them you'll have to return to a train station or your camp and this actually sounds really cool it opens up the possibility for a lot of flexibility in Fallout 76. Changing your build right now is just really not a thing especially when it comes to special stats. You can move one special point at a time using one perk point or level up which of course gets really expensive really quickly when you have 50 to distribute overall. These special loadouts will make it so you can more easily and freely actually switch between different builds. A lot of people get shoehorned into one thing or another, whether it be a junkies build, a melee build, a bloody build. But now, when this update goes live, you'll basically have a fresh start to just try something else. Maybe you have one of those rare or higher tier legendary items that you could craft an entire build around. And although it seems at first glance to be relatively minor, I think this is another one of those changes that will pay massive dividends with your overall enjoyment of the game and just trying new things, testing things out. There's several builds I would love to try but can't really be bothered due to the time investment and more specifically the perk investment. Although it does have a bit of a downside as they mentioned, at least on release, it seems like there'll be two available loadout slots and you may be able to purchase more via the Atomic Shop. So this too will likely be some kind of microtransaction. But hey, at least you get one for free, I suppose. In a nearly identical vein, they're doing the same thing with camps. So you'll now actually be able to have several camp loadouts saved. So as you go to place down your camp, instead of choosing your primary or main camp, you could choose a secondary loadout slot and start anew. Or if you already have a camp built up, you could place it down there using the schematic tool and kind of have a secondary or alternate one you can swap back and forth to every once in a while. Apparently, even with this, you'll be able to actually change the icon on this and rename the different loadouts. And there's some nice quality of life things with this, like the vending machines placed with these loadouts will actually keep the same stock. So you won't have to go in and actually change up all the items in the vending machines. Although displays will have different stocks, so you can continue to use the same displays, but change around what appears in them. This is another one that I think is going to be super huge. There's a lot of camps in the game that are really based around literally one spot. Like they are built around some kind of geographical object in Fallout 76, so they can't be moved. And of course, tearing that all down to start anew or try something else out is kind of a big investment. This gives players that opportunity to actually try something else. Just use that other loadout slot, have a blank slate, and start building something else somewhere else on the map, and then you could hypothetically switch between the two. We also heard that display cases will finally be placeable in shelters in the near future. Daily Ops are getting big updates, so some new content in addition to the quality of life fixes. Daily Ops will have a new game mode with decryption. You'll need to hunt down enemy code carriers, but in this mode, enemies will actually hurt more. They'll have additional armor penetration, so using stealth to hunt these guys down is preferred. This being hugely different than the existing game mode in Daily Ops in that stealth doesn't actually work. You can't just brute force your way through. In this other mode, apparently taking it a bit slower and a bit more precisely is preferred. And to go along with that, there'll be new arenas in Daily Ops with Vault 96, the Watoga Raider Arena, as well as new enemies with Scorched and the Mothman Cultus, and underlying all of that, there'll be some new mutations for enemies, adding in things like a healing ability so enemies could heal each other, and even when you take down enemies, they'll release some kind of toxic smoke on death. This will effectively make it so there will be significantly more combinations of Daily Ops. 
those new variables applying to both game modes and then just all the time a second game mode that could pop up in the daily rotation. And of course to incentivize you to actually play this they also mentioned some new rewards, weapons, and loot will be winnable via completing these likely from those rare reward plans. We still don't really know what exactly these will be, but in the files there still is that lingering R91 from before Wastelanders and even an auto axe. It would be pretty exciting if Bethesda finally adds in the R91 into a modern Fallout game. And this next update is reportedly including way more in these miscellaneous quality of life improvements. Aim assist for controllers, crafting sliders for workbenches, so you won't have to spam click while crafting, you can now just set to craft numerous things at one time. The world activity menu where you could find daily ops will later include things like vending machines near you, nuke zones, and active events on your server. Melee got quite a bit of an overhaul with things like bug fixes and overall your hits will actually register more reliably and feel more fluid. So in general, basically Bethesda is taking what seems like the first half for the first several months of 2021 to just add in a ton of quality of life stuff into Fallout 76 and like a lot of it. All this stuff is about to go live on the PTS this Friday, so we'll have a way more concrete idea of what it looks like, what it plays like, and of course data mines about some of the more specific stuff coming down the road, but as I started to mention before, I feel like this is a really positive change. We know at some point Fault 76 is getting the larger scale Brotherhood DLC Part 2. The Part 1 is a super short experience, you can complete it in 3-4 to four hours relatively easily. Part 2 is likely to be much bigger and perhaps even include new features like Expeditions, which may take us outside of Appalachia. Imagine having a short quest or some kind of activity that returns you to Washington DC in a Fallout game, that would be pretty amazing. And I do really like this approach of before we get to that, actually fixing or improving some of the fundamentals of the game. Now for several of these things, you could definitely argue that we're in year three, they probably should have came a lot earlier, but whether they are late or not, at the very least, they are coming, finally. We've never really had this extended period of quality of life improvements with the game, several larger scale updates in a row that don't don't really feature a ton of content. Yes, technically the daily op stuff is definitely new content, but it's not a ton of new content as much of a ton of new combinations of content. And it's going to be one of those things that I think will also add to paying dividends over time. New updates will bring new rewards to daily ops and having more combinations for you to experience will make it so those take a lot longer to get stale. Because let's face it, since they were added in September, they've definitely got it stale with the existing combinations, even though at first it seemed like there were so many. Although it is interesting because it doesn't really incentivize me or probably many others to immediately return to Fallout 76. Like I don't want to start playing a ton again just because my inventory is now significantly more functional or just a lot more satisfying to use. And even with this follow-up update, there really isn't a ton of content to draw people in who have perhaps taken a step away from the game. And even overall, Fallout 76 is still definitely not a perfect game. It still has that Bethesda jank in a way. A lot of these bugs or issues you'll run into are relatively minor and pretty forgettable but you definitely will run into them. Even just today, while filming some of the background for this video, I ran into several. Guns will randomly just start reloading before you actually run out of ammo, whether this be visual or an actual problem. The game still faces problems with dupers and exploiting. There's just a big dupe wave as well as a band wave to follow it. But even though there's a band wave, it's not like all of those duped items were deleted, so they were still distributed into the world, causing harm to the economy. And overall, it seems like although we are getting a ton of those quality of life improvements, which I'm super happy about, they aren't really improving some of those back end issues that could future proof the game a bit more. And even just this battle royale mode that's in the game, like it's still here, it's just kind of in there, sitting, getting neglected, not really getting any attention or updates. People still play it from time to time, but compared to other modern BRs or even the rest of the game, it really is just quite competitive and stale. I feel like they're just not removing it because it does have a core base that plays it from time to time. One thing I really wish we saw with these updates or I would love to see in the future that we don't really seem to be getting or Bethesda seems very reluctant to do is a big balance pass. With updates and even this most recent update, we saw a couple of things like the dodgy perk got slightly reworked, they reworked one of the events mods for power armor, but nothing super huge, nothing meta changing. I've been saying for a while, I feel like Bethesda should just, with an update, rework many of the legendaries or mutations in Fallout 76. There's some super meta builds like bloodied or junkies, but then several other legendary effects that still drop have literally been the same since launch and garbage since launch. There are several primary legendary effects you can get and it just makes the weapon unusable or it's a throwaway weapon. 
I think it'd be really exciting if they took this time in between major content drops to look at a lot of those and just buff up some of the bad ones. They don't even necessarily have to touch the main ones, but just buff some of the less relevant legendaries, the least used legendaries, which they probably have some data for. And you could even generalize this to per cards and mutations also. I think it'd make the game really fun and interesting, and who knows, maybe while you're at it, throw in a few new ones along the way. The meta of the game overall has largely stayed the same. The only real shift was when two shot explosive saw a big nerf at one point. And it's not even really to increase the overall damage dealt by players, but just giving them more options as to which build to choose. As far as what we do know is coming in the future, based on some of those data mines from the data miners discord. One quick and easy one, there's a laughing emote on the way, which will definitely be used to mock other players. I could already see that happening. An army scrap box skin for Fallout first, several new Fosnot masks that will be a part of that event. And although those are all pretty cool, the biggest of which was found is this new main menu system labeled as Athena. This is entries for some of the existing game modes, including actually an image for the survival game mode, which of course has been cut from the game, but could make a return with this. Although who knows, they could just be populating it with some of the old files. But also with this new menu system, we could find two new game modes, one labeled as custom and one Bethesda custom. One of these may just be for internal purposes, but one seems like it'll actually be a custom server-esque feature where we could actually launch our own server or private world, but with our own modified game rules, changing something about the game, like perhaps how much experience you gain, how much damage you deal or receive. This is largely speculative right now, but a lot of it is based on the ability to re-import our characters. So seemingly we'll have custom servers, but if you do some wacky stuff on it, it'll stop progress on certain characters for live servers. So if you cheat on that server, let's say, cheat by basically turning up your damage, you won't actually be able to keep that loot and progress it onto the main server. That's why this re-import character option should be there. It seems really interesting. There's a lot of potential with this. Obviously it's super early on. After this was data mined in the next build, Bethesda actually removed all this because they realized, hey, people aren't supposed to see this yet. And without a doubt, this could be the first early on step to mods. Bethesda has still remained adamant mods will come at some point and and perhaps these custom servers will be kind of the precursor. Later on in some updates, mod support could come to them. So overall, the future for Fallout 76 to me looks really promising, but also it's one of those things where there's really not a ton of content to return to the game right now or even in the next couple of months. There's some cool and fun limited time events, some of these being repeats like Fosnut, other ones just being more script or more experience, things like that. And based on the community calendar right now, no other big DLC is coming out anytime soon and hypothetically no update is coming out in the next two months either, although that obviously could be changed pretty easily and we'll know more on Friday when the PTS goes live. But I think this year three will be pretty big for Fallout 76 in one way or another. Either the game will actually reach new heights or perhaps start the kind of downward spiral of dwindling out. There are quite a few big catalysts with this game on the horizon. The Microsoft buyout going live for Bethesda, Technically, that has not yet been finalized. Microsoft does not own Bethesda, cannot make decisions around their games. The next gen of consoles is kind of there, getting more adoption and widespread use, but no next gen version of Fallout 76 has been announced, even though it has been announced for games like ESO, and even Fallout 4 has a 60 FPS mod now, and even of course the release of Starfield, which many expect will be happening later this year. For me at least, it feels like many of these factors make it so modding has to happen for Fallout 76 this year, if it's going to happen at all. I think when Starfield is announced and released, a lot of those modders that would have created cool stuff for Fallout 76 may move on to look at that game and the modability of it. Hopefully there is quite a bit of modability with Starfield, Bethesda hasn't forgotten. And although it's all very much so on proven ground, we don't know what exactly it's going to be. I would definitely love for at least some early modding tools to get released for Fallout 76 in the first half of 2021, and I think that would really be the critical period for them to strike with that. But overall, I think things are heading in a very positive direction. But as they're laying the groundwork, the framework for a really solid game now, and hopefully in a few months we'll hear major new details about a big DLC. A proper expansion sized experience this time, not something small like Steel Dawn or just some new daily ops. So in conclusion, Fallout 76, at least right now in 2021, I don't think it's necessarily the best time to return. In that, I don't think there's going to be a bunch of new stuff to do, at least quite yet or in the next couple of months. But you could watch by waiting for that moment to return, knowing there are some really solid improvements being made with the game. And when you eventually do return, you'll probably be pleasantly surprised with what you find. With that said, I hope you guys all enjoyed this one. I hope you found this video informative and until next time I hope to see you all later.